you have requested some new methods to do things. So today I'm gonna to show you a new and exciting way to make fried cauliflower or cauliflower wings or like a vegan version of fried chicken. Hey guys, I'm Candice the Edgy Veg, and if you're new here, hello, bonjour. I make new videos, delicious vegan recipes, twice a week, every single week, and if you are new here, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on these delicious recipes every single week. So like I said, today I'm gonna to teach you how to use cauliflower to mimic chicken, but in a totally different way. You're probably like, I roll, you know, cauliflower wings, cauliflower fried chicken's been around forever. This is not new, Candice. We are bored goodbye, but don't go because I'm gonna show you how to make the crispiest version of cauliflower, like fried chicken, using a very special ingredient, secret ingredient, if you will. And it just brings that recipe to life even more. And I'm also gonna show you or explain to you a baked version because a lot of you guys want to bake my original fried chicken recipe and it just doesn't work with the batter. But with this one, it'll work. So you can bake it as well or air fry it or whatever. So today I'm going to show you how to make the crispiest vegan fried chicken you've ever had. All right, so this recipe is inspired by a couple of different people. So I've seen over the years in traditional chicken recipes where chefs or moms use like crushed cornflakes and it makes it super nice and crispy. It just, it has everything that you want. And then I recently became really obsessed with Mary's Test Kitchen's batter for her tofu chicken and she uses like puffed rice cereal, so pretty much Rice Krispies. And today I'm gonna to show you how to use that. So that's our secret ingredient to making these the crispiest. I mean, deep frying or pan frying is preferred. It, you get the crispiest, like the most flavorful taste, the most crisp, it's definitely the preferred way. But if you are, you know, you don't have a deep fryer, you don't want the mess, you're not into deep frying, you can also do this in the oven. All right, enough about me, let's make these suckers. So the first thing we are going to do is cut our cauliflower into large florets. What I mean by large florets is more like half of a chicken breast size. It's smaller than the palm of your hand, but not by much. And what you'll get then is kind of a thicker, more juicier fried cauliflower fried chicken. If you cut them smaller, then you get more of a wing style. So you can really do this either way, but we're going to try and mimic fried chicken today. Make them a little bit larger than you think because when we put them in the oven, they tend to shrink. So I'm just gonna throw these cauliflower florets onto the pan. And just as they are, you don't have to oil them or anything because we are going to be using oil later to fry them. And we are going to bake these guys at 400 degrees for about 25 minutes. You want to go in and flip them at like, 15. And keep an eye on them, just depending on what type of oven you have. I have kind of a weird oven, and that's what I'm using to test all these recipes on. And it just, it's a little bit hotter than the average oven, so do keep an eye on them. I'm just gonna throw all of those on there. All right, so while you're waiting for those guys to kind of bake and roast, go ahead and make your breading. So in the breading that I'm making, or the seasoned flour, the dredging, I'm just going to use all-purpose flour, and then a lot of the spices that I like to use in any of my other fried chicken recipes. So we have regular salt, we have pepper, we have garlic salt, lots of paprika, of course, nutritional yeast, and onion powder. In Mary's Test Kitchens, in like Mary's recipe, she uses gluten-free flour. So if you have that Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one flour, you can also use that if you are gluten-free. I'm not, so I'm just gonna use regular flour. I like to hold on to that gluten-free flour for when I have guests, which won't be anytime soon because it's COVID. So go ahead and add your ingredients into the bowl, everything but this puffed rice. I'm going to add this in afterwards. That's a little trick that I got from Mary as well. So this is just normal Rice Krispies or generic store brand, like crispy puffed rice cereal. It doesn't need to be super fancy. It's getting fried after all. So we'll start with the flour. We have our garlic salt onion powder, regular salt, nutritional yeast. And I've actually breaded things in just nutritional yeast, like tofu, and even that's really good, or nutritional yeast and um, wheat germ. If you know about my um, breaded tofu recipe, my crispy breaded tofu, and white pepper. If you don't have white pepper, 
you can use black pepper. I just find white pepper to be a little bit milder and you can't really see it in the batter. And then give that a whisk. And I'm sorry for anyone that hates the sound of metal on metal whisking. I get a lot of comments where people are like, oh my God, buy a silicon whisk. And I'm like, but then like silicon has to break down too in the environment. And my whisks are still good. I don't wanna buy anything that I already have. So when these die, then I will buy a silicone whisk. So of course we're vegan, so we can't have eggs. So instead of kind of the egg part of the dredging, I'm going to make this little concoction that I love. Concoction? Concoction that I love, which is soy milk, apple cider vinegar, and then an egg replacer. So this is just Bob's Red Mill normal egg replacer. So whatever egg replacer you have, whether it's the veg or you know energy, just look up whatever two eggs worth is and then use that amount unprepared, just the powder. There we go, it's a little humid in here today. Things are getting a little stuck together. As you guys know, for cooking, I prefer soy milk because of the high protein content, especially if I'm trying to make some sort of like batter or uh, egg wash or some sort of like egg concoction like this. All right, so mix that egg replacer in there. And then I'm also going to add some apple cider vinegar and this is going to create kind of like a buttermilk situation. It's go See what it's doing there? It's starting to like puff up and curdle. It's exactly what you want. And then you can set that aside for at least five to 10 minutes. And then that's going to come together and then you can use it for your dredging. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes, so I'm just gonna go ahead and flip these guys over, kind of randomly. I'm just going in and flipping them over. All right, stick that guy back in for another 10 minutes. Okay, so you want your cauliflower to kinda look like something like this. A little bit browned, not too much, and I'm going to transfer them onto a wire cooling rack, and what this is going to do is just help them cool down that we can touch them. And see how some of those pieces just really shrunk down? So that's why you want to do kind of larger florets. Oh, good save, Candace, wow. Here we are, just catching flying cauliflower. I actually once in high school, and I hated gym class, and we had to play basketball, and someone threw the basketball at me, and I sat down <laughs> instead of catching it, because I was like, I don't want to participate. I was kind of happy just like pretending that I wanted the ball running up and down that I was about to say court. No, I was about to say field, but it's a court. Okay, so just let these cool down for about 10 minutes, and then we are going to go ahead and do all of our dredging. All right, so when it comes to the cooking method, you can do it in a pan over oil like this. I usually prefer to do it in a deep fryer, but I kind of retired my old deep fryer and haven't replaced it yet. And I ordered one and it's just taking forever to get here. So we're going to just use a pan filled with oil. So if you have a wok, use that. If you have just like something with a deep lip and a heavy bottom is ideal. And then you can just measure the temperature with a the thermometer. Or I, what I like to do, what Molly taught me, is if you put a kernel of corn into your oil, when it pops, it's at 325. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a couple of these pieces and throw them into my seasoned flour. Do like four or five or six in this case. Shake them off and put them back onto the wire cooling rack. The whole thing here is that you want a nice thick coating and you wanna make sure that everything sticks. If you don't have egg replacer, you can always do this with like tapioca starch or cornstarch as well to make this kind of like slurry that we're going to do. So now that we've done that, you're going to have a ton of leftover flour and we're going to add our puffed rice cereal. So you want to like smush about half of it with your hands. So just like, like this, but not too much because you do want that crispiness. And if you're using, let's say, cornflakes, for example, you do the same thing. You crush it with your hands or smash it with a mallet or something. All right, so that's probably like half crushed, maybe. Oh. You're just gonna mix that in with your flour. All right, so let's start dredging. I'm gonna put my hair back. <clears throat> I just recently got my hair done because my stylist is a very good friend of mine and I have a backyard now. So we sat out there and did that, which was lovely. All right, so the way that this is going to go is I'm going to take each individual piece, I'm going to dip it into my egg mixture, and then I am going to let any excess fall off. 
If you find that this isn't thickening up, you can always add another tablespoon of whatever your egg replacer is and then put it into, and then use your other hand. So you have your dippy hand and then you have your, your smooshy hand, let's say. And you're just going to coat that guy. And then I like to just give it a good press to really make sure that that rice sticks. Throw off any excess, voila. Put it back on there and do all of them and then fry. Do this and then by the time you're done, it'll be about, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. It's a long enough time that they've been sitting. We are going to throw them into our hot oil. I would do this in batches. Um, try not to crowd them because then the oil temperature is going to go down too much. It's gonna cool off and then it's just, it's not ideal. It doesn't cook properly. You end up with just oily as heck little cauliflower pieces. Toss them around occasionally so that everything gets fried. So I would do like five, maybe six, depending on the size of your pan. Each stove, each deep fryer, each oven is different. So we're not all going to have the same result. So if, you know, I say four minutes or five minutes and it's turning brown quicker, take them out. Okay, so after four to five minutes, you are going to get these, oh, so crispy and brown and delicious looking little morsels. So kind of shake off the excess oil, transfer them. You can use the same pan. Don't make more dishes by throwing them on a plate. Just use the same pan and put another cooling rack on top of it. And then all of that oil drips right into the pan. All right guys, there you have it. The crispiest cauliflower wings or cauliflower fried chicken that you've ever had. So you can serve it with your favorite wing sauce if you want. I like to serve buffalo or barbecue or uh, one of my personal favorites, the uh, maple garlic from both my cookbook and my website. But enough of me talking, let's dive in. Mm. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Like tear apart cauliflower, nice and soft on the inside, super crunchy and just flavorful on the outside. It's so delicious. I, you know what, honestly, I may never go back to making my wings or you know, vegan fried chicken any other way. Thank you so much for being here. And if you like this recipe, I have a ton more. You can hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. I release videos twice a week, every single week. And definitely go check out uh, Mary's Test Kitchen. She also has awesome, awesome vegan recipes. I've been following her for years. We've talked online for years um, and you'll really love her. If you are not already subscribed to her, go subscribe. The recipe is always in the description box down below. I'll see you next time. Bye. And this package came for you. I don't know what it is. What? Thanks. You're welcome. I figured. Wow. You didn't get like a real graduation, so we'll just celebrate with donuts. Thank you. Oh my goodness. You're welcome. Very proud of you.